Amen. Around the corner. Let's stand together and sing now about living by faith. You're going to take the gospel around the corner or across the world. It's going to be something you got to do by faith. 547, lift it up together with me. for singing. You may be seated. You're here for a great night tonight, and I'm so excited about the wonderful event that we've come gathering together for, and this is the commissioning service from Miss Summer Scroggs, and has been a faithful servant of the Lord, and has prepared, and is getting ready to go to Botswana, Africa, and it's a great joy of our church to get to use this time as a opportunity to let her know that we are behind her in prayer, we're behind her in support, we're behind her in our, uh, just our emphasis, and so we're so thankful, and you've got, a, uh, got to be a part of all of this tonight, we're looking forward to that. I'm going to ask Brother Kyle to come, and I'll give a little challenge at the end and remind you that what she's going to do over there is exactly what we're supposed to be doing right here, around the corner, around the world. It's the same job, different people, same job, same message, and I want Brother Kyle to come and share a little bit about what happened today, and then he's going to open us in prayer. Well, praise the Lord. Uh, we had a great time up in uh, Ridge Kids this morning. We had uh, tailgating time and all of that this morning. Uh, but praise the Lord, we had two professions of faith in Sunday school this morning. And uh, the Lord is so good. And uh, I'm so thankful that we get to have uh, a part in uh, reaching our community uh, for the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, we do just praise you for your goodness to us. And uh, Lord, we thank you that you died for us. And Lord, I pray that you would uh, bless uh, the service tonight as uh, we uh, send out summer to uh, continue reaching people with the gospel. Lord, thank you that the gospel is for everyone. Lord, I pray that your hand would be on the service tonight. In your name I pray. Amen. Well, our caloric intake was really high this morning because we had food everywhere, and I don't think any of it was healthy, but you may be wondering why Brother Kyle and Daniel are in the outfits they are. Well, we're in our Sunday school campaign, and we're going to see this right now as they get ready to see which of the teams won, and then whichever team won, you'll see your team captain at the end, and they've got some candy bars for whichever the winning team is, so let's find out right now.
Well, we just wanted to take you back to yesteryear when they didn't put uh, music and words to the movies. It was just silent movie, and so uh, we got that. And so if you're on the team of the Orange Slices, and uh, if you don't know who that is, we'll read them before we get uh, to the end of the service, if Kyle will remind me, and then we'll let you pick up your candy bar from him at the end of the service as you make your way over to the fellowship. Well, we're excited about uh, this wonderful time to be here, and uh, these ladies are going to sing a wonderful song that the family had requested just as summer heads out. So ladies, if you don't mind to come on up and sing for us, and uh, I know that this song will be a blessing to you as they make their way up here, and uh, as they sing, just listen, and we're thankful for them.
God has been good, so good. I have been blessed. God has been good, so good. I have been. Amen. Thank you, ladies. We have been blessed, and we're so thankful for that. And Summer Scroggs has been blessed, and her family has been blessed with a great um, uh, church heritage. And I'm going to ask Kyle to take the microphone down, which everybody has, to Preacher Lastly. Preacher Lastly is our pastor emeritus, and I don't know of a more faithful man that's served the Lord and continues to serve him. And he doesn't mind me telling his age. He'll be 92 on his next birthday. Somewhere there, he may have had a little time when he didn't want that told back in his 50s or so. But uh, he's well past that. And uh, I thank God for these, all these years. Amen. Not and, ashamed uh, of them. He is not ashamed. And he has stood faithfully for our Savior and uh, has meant so much to this family. And uh, he has been just a <clears throat> great mentor and helper to uh, Marty. And the family, and so he's going to give a challenge from his seat there, and uh, and pray for summer as well. So, preacher, lastly, you take it. Well, it, it has been good to have this family in our church. There, the father and, and the all the grandfather, and has led them in the right way, and they're just a bit blessing. I've been sat behind them here for ages. It seems like and they've all been, I mean, just a blessing to everyone they come in contact with, and. We thank God for this church, for the, the, this row of people right here. And Summer, we, we thank God for you and your testimony. And as you go down to Bots, Bots, Botswana, 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 okay, I'll get it right. And uh, we'll say remembering in prayer. And uh, you need to be filled with the Spirit. And we're going to pray now that God would fill you and make you uh, 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 give you power as you go into the Bots Botswana, Botswana, and uh, just look to the Lord. He and you, we need Him as we go out to serve Him. You know that. And so I want to pray, Father. We thank you for uh, Summer, and she's been a fine young lady and have, with a good testimony. And thank you, Lord, you've led her to go down to Botswana and to lift up the name of Christ. And, Father, we know we can't do it in our own strength. Lord, we need your help. And would you uh, baptize her with the blessed Holy Spirit, fill her and lead her and use her in a great way to turn many to righteousness. And may there be many, many down there in heaven someday because of her ministry. We thank you for raising her up and go with her and bless her and lead her and guide her. And uh, Lord, when one day, Lord, may she be in heaven, see many that she's won to Christ because of uh, her ministry, I pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Well, there's a great place for a video we we're going to show right there. But we're going to wait just a little bit and we'll see that in a moment. It, it dawned on me, I was working back and forth with Marty and we haven't seen Summer's video that uh, she had had given some churches. This just gives you a little bit of a scope of what it is that God has called her to. But we'll get back to that in just a little bit. I want to introduce somebody to you. Some of you don't know. And that is Brother Eric Bowman. He's the Africa Director for BIMI. And uh, Brother Bowman is a good friend. We come from, from the same church. Uh, he's from Franklin Road Baptist Church. And uh, God used him in a great way in Africa just as a missionary there, planting churches and serving. And then the need uh, got greater and greater for him to step up and do more than just his area of Africa. And now is the Africa director, and he's a good friend, a wonderful servant of the Lord. And then he'll be the contact, of course, back and forth and be the resource person for summer as he is for the Haley's over there. And uh, so it was just a fitting time for us to have Brother Bowman. His wife just spoke to the ladies in a week or so back, and so it's good to have Miss Lori Bowman back with us. But Brother Eric, would you mind coming to the platform? And I've asked him to come and preach for 
for us. Just give a, a word to us as a church and us as summer and just this evening, just cap it off. And I trust that the Lord will use him in our lives now as we listen. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. The book of Third John, please. The book of Third John. And what a blessing to be able to be back here at Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church. And my wife was here last week and uh, she really enjoyed her time here. So I am the husband of her, all right? So I, she's wherever, wherever she goes before me, um, she outshines, all right? But what a blessing about sending, sending, what a blessing. You know, I was told many years ago about the importance of the local church and that it's not the seating capacity that's important. It is the sending capacity that is important for a local church. And let me tell you, Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church, what a blessing that this church is already a sending church for missionaries. And now for another one for summer. What a blessing. Summer, just the fact that we, you are here right now at this time, ready to go, you're a walking miracle. And every one of the people in the church here know it. Thank you for praying. Thank you for putting your arms around her in prayer. And just the fact that she has gone through deputation, has raised us, and been to this point. What a joy. And it gives me a little bit of an excitement to know that she, at what God has for her in Botswana. I've been in Botswana numerous occasions. The missionaries, of course, we're going to be with are the Haley's, dear friends of mine also. What a wonderful opportunity. I was on the phone with them working about all the logistics, about the advance, all the things that she's going to be doing within the next few weeks. A lot of things planned. God has already opened up some incredible doors for her to be able to step into right now. And um, what a blessing. But right now, I wish I could focus on that, but I want to be able to be a blessing to the church here. Sending. Sending of a missionary. You know, all about missions is all about the going, isn't it? Every time we have a missions conference and every time a missionary comes here, he talks about the Great Commission. We are to go, right? And everyone is supposed to be involved in that in some capacity. Some will be more than others depending on the gifts and the abilities that God's given. But no one can properly go unless they are sent. There is a divine sending. Jesus said in the book of John, he says, as the Father has sent me, even so send I you. Wow, what a blessing to be sent in the same capacity as the Lord Jesus. Think about the, all the power, the authority, and the resources that were available. Those also are available to us. The sending. And just as all of us are be involved in the going and subcapacity, all of us are going to be involved in the sending. Oh, I know everyone here is involved in subcapacity in worldwide evangelization. And I want to be able to be an encouragement to you this evening for a few minutes and have a little bit of an exhortation. The book here at 3 John, first part of this talks about someone who was very efficient in the sending. His name was Gaius. The meaning of his name was happy. And no one is more happy when they are in the service of the Lord and giving unto the Lord. A cheerful giver. Amen. Begin reading in verse number five. The, the Apostle John now is writing now to Gaius, a, a one that's very beloved of Gaius. And he says, Beloved, thou doest faithfully. Whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers, which have borne witness of thy charity before the church, whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sort, thou shalt do well. Because that for his name's sake they went forth, taking nothing of the Gentiles, we therefore ought to receive such. 
that we might be fellow helpers to the truth. Gaius was a man that was very involved in sending, and he did all that he could to take the servants of God and help send them forward on their journey. But it's interesting, it was after a godly sort. There are some lessons that we can learn from Gaius here about sending. First of all, I would like to make quick attention is that there is a evidence of sending, and that was a he was healthy spiritually. Look at verse number two. Evidently, he had some physical issues, and the apostle John said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Isn't it interesting that even though maybe our physical uh, being may be limited and maybe have some health challenges, we, have, we can have a soul that's prospering and a soul that's growing, and such was the case of Gaius. He was uh, walking in truth, it says in verse 4. In verse 5, it says that he was faithful. In verse 6, it mentions he was charitable. His soul prospered. And truly, that is for one that is sending. Each one of you that have done your best to make sure that your missionaries have what's needed, make sure your pastor has what he needs, making sure the church has what all they need to be able to reach not only this area, but the world with the gospel. Let me tell you, that's the evidence your soul is prospering. And let me say, even Buffalo, ba Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church, it is a sign that the church is healthy. In Acts chapter 13, the church at Antioch that was sending out the missionaries there for the first time, it mentions that they were obviously discipling and training leaders, and it gives a long list in Acts chapter 13 to the leaders that were in place there. It was a sign of a healthy church. So Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church, rejoice in the fact that this is an evidence that your soul is prospering. The church is prospering. But there's a challenge with it. As we see there in verse number six, as I've already read, we are, there's an exhortation in sending that we need to do it after a godly sort. In the margin of my Bible, it actually says, another way to say this is that it is a manner that is worthy of God. In a manner that glorifies God. That's how we're to send. In a manner that after a godly sort, in a manner that is worthy of God, in a manner that glorifies Him, in a manner that is in His character. And truly, we are never more God-like when we are sacrificing to serve others. This after a godly sort, of course, it implies doing in every capacity and a godly sort, just as God um, uh, does for us. He helps to minister to us in a physical sense. The song, We've Been Blessed. How many of you can testify to that? <laughs> Amen. Our physical food, our raiment, shelter, he's done it all. Even as God even gives us the spiritual nourishment. I was reminded of Jesus when he said to the apostle Peter, he says, Peter, Satan wants to sift you as wheat, but Peter, I have prayed for you. <laughs> How incredible to have Jesus pray for me. <laughs> wow, that would be incredible. But you know what? That's what he does. He's up in heaven right now at the right hand of the Father, acting as our intercessor. Amen. He has provided all things physically. He is there to provide things spiritually. He's all there to do everything that he can to be able to help his servants. And we are to do the same. We are to send after a godly sort. Why should we do this? Or let me tell you, who should we do this to? We see that in verse number seven. 
Because that for his namesake, they went forth. The people that Gaius helped are the people that were going forth in the name of Christ. They were gospel preaching missionaries. And oh, let me tell you, that's what this world needs. Yes, there's a lot of humanitarian things that we can do. And you know, you know what? Especially on the continent of Africa, we need it all. But let me tell you, most of all, we need the gospel. By the way, that's what's going to turn America around. It's the gospel. We don't need to worry about who's in the White House or what's going on in the courthouse or anything else. We need to be careful about making sure that the gospel is being preached in the church house. Amen. Making sure that we are out on the highways and the hedges and on the sidewalks doing all that we can to bring others to the saving knowledge of Christ. Why should we help? The last part of verse number 7. It says, he helped because he he didn't want them to take nothing of the Gentiles. (laughs) Well, the the heathen, they're not going to provide for missionaries, that's for sure. Many of them, they don't even want the missionary. They don't even realize that they need the message of the missionary. But the church does. The church knows what this world needs. And we are to help to provide and the means of sending it out. The Lord's work is to be supported by the Lord's people after a godly sort. And then there's the effects of the sending. We see it in verse 8 in closing here. We have the blessing of being a fellow helper. Woo-hoo! A fellow helper of the truth. The Bible gives many different illustrations of that, that those that go and those that send are equally important with God. We see that truth in the Old Testament. Remember David, when he went out to battle and those that had to stay by the stuff, they both those that fought and those that stayed by equally shared in the reward. We see that in 1 Corinthians when it talks about the spiritual harvest. Those that plant and those that water get to benefit as same with the one that reaps. What a blessing. Many times missionaries are held up and I'm I'm glad for people that do but let me tell you we're all in this together we're all co-labors together with God (laughs) fellow helpers in the truth what a blessing oh let me tell you Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church what a blessing we are going and sending now in a manner Worthy of God. And all we do is for the honor, praise, and glory of our God. So rejoice. You're sending now from your congregation a fine missionary who's done a fantastic job on the road representing you. She represents the Lord, yes, but she represents Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church. I could give you forms from dozens of pastors writing me and saying, top class, top class, top shelf, first class. Very excited. We'll support right away. Amen. And the fact that God has taken her through all of these steps gives us the the confidence and the faith that he's going to continue on in the months ahead. It's an evidence our church is healthy. Amen. There's exhortation. Let's continue. Let's continue now after a godly sort. Let's do all that we can to help. Physically, spiritually. There needs to be the name of Summer Scroggs on the lips of every member of this church daily in prayer. 
after a godly sort. And you know what? When you do, ah, fellow helpers, the blessings of being co-laborers and fellow helpers to the truth. God bless you. Thank you, preacher. Preacher, for that. We appreciate that. And he means what he says about folks reporting back about summer. I hear some of those as well. And I'm just thankful that we get to be those fellow helpers and get to push along in the ministry. I'm going to show the video at this time just to give you a little scope of what uh, summer has been showing churches. And then Brother Daniel will come lead us in a song. Imagine living in a country that is the world's leading producer of diamonds. Some people in this country experience a life of luxury due to the diamond trade. However, this wealth isn't experienced by everyone, as many have a meager standard of living. While there is a disparity in the economic situation, the people have something in common. They are in spiritual poverty. Most live in spiritual darkness with little to no knowledge of the gospel. This, unfortunately, is an accurate description of the country of Botswana. There are 2.3 million souls who need to hear the gospel, and the laborers are few. Hello, my name is Summer Scroggs. I'm a missionary sent by Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church in Gray, Tennessee, and am being assisted by Baptist International Missions in Chattanooga, Tennessee. The Lord has prepared me to serve in missions by allowing me to serve in my local church in various children's ministries as well as community outreach since I was in seventh grade. The Lord also allowed me to obtain a nursing degree at a Christian college as well as complete several college biblical studies. Botswana is a landlocked country located in the southern region of Africa. While around half of the people affiliate with Christianity, it is mostly focused on emotionalism with very little Bible. Many people in the villages are rooted deeply in religious tradition and lack the knowledge of the Savior. The Lord has burdened my heart to reach these villages and has called me to work with veteran church planning missionaries Mike and Cindy Haley. As a registered nurse, the Lord has called me to use medicine as a way to introduce people to the great physician. Using medicine as a tool to introduce people to the gospel has been effective in Africa since the days of David Livingston, who was used mightily of the Lord in Botswana through medical outreach. The medical outreach ministry will allow us to establish relationships with those in the villages and also help with potential new church plants in villages that were otherwise closed. Along with medical outreach, I will also be assisting church planning efforts through other outreach such as Bible and tract distribution, Kids Bible Club, and Ladies Discipleship, as well as other ministries in the church. As I follow the Lord's call, I go in the confidence that He will give the increase and trust that there will be eternal fruit through the work which He allows me to do for Him. Will you consider partnering with me in prayer and financially as I minister to the people in Botswana? Will you pray for the spiritually poor people in this land? Will you ask the Lord how He will use you in reaching the lost to Botswana with the gospel? Thank you. We're going to sing together the song, Great is Thy Faithfulness. You can all stand, song number 26. I'm so grateful that as summer goes and as we send her and get to be involved in all of that, that we serve a God who is faithful. And Summer, he's going to be there with you. And we're going to sing this as a church family as we send her tonight. Grace is thy faithfulness, oh God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee.
Lord, as we come to this time of service where we give you our tithes and offerings, Lord, we thank you that we can worship you in this way. Lord, I pray that you would bless uh, these offerings and use them, Lord, for your glory. In your name I pray, amen. You may be seated. Amen. Great is his faithfulness. What a blessing. Well, as we plan this evening out, we want to have Dr. John Stevens come. And Brother Stevens was our interim pastor, and uh, he has put his permanent mark on Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church. We're so thankful that God brought him in at a wonderful time, and uh, he was used of the Lord to be a blessing to so many folks here at the church. And uh, it was a joy. It's always a joy to get to have him come back and be with us. He's over in North Carolina, but uh, not too far. And Miss Marilyn was not able to come with him this trip. But uh, we're certainly praying for her and the health, con health concerns that she's facing right now. And uh, so I want you to lift her up in prayer. But uh, Brother Stevens has been a blessing to me. And I'm going to ask him to come on up this way as he makes his way to the pulpit. And I just want him to know how much I appreciate him. And uh, he has loved on this church. And he has been used of the Lord in summer's life and in the lives of each and every one of you. And uh, he, we owe him a great debt. And so it's a wonderful joy each time to have him back to uh, Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church. And so we like to consider this his home away from home. And we're thankful that you're home again. Brother Stevens, why don't you come preach to us? Thank you. Right. God bless you. I'm like a bad penny. I keep showing up. You know, I see you two guys up here. Just want you to know something. Summer could strike you both out. She could do that without, just like that, without any problem whatsoever. She's a wonderful girl. We've sort of adopted her like a granddaughter. She's precious to Marilyn and I. And I've communicated with her through texts down through the almost years she's been uh, out there on the trail. And I thank God for her and praise the Lord for her. I want you to take your Bibles for a few moments tonight and turn to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. I want you to notice what Paul has to say in verse 12, because when I think of that, I think about summer. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me, who that he counted me faithful, me, putting me into the ministry. God has put summer into the ministry here. This is what this service is all about tonight. I want you to notice three thoughts here tonight. I want you to notice... Uh, the Apostle Paul and I believe Summer were both gifted with his ability, graced with his approval, and guided by his providence. As I think of this verse tonight, grace with his approval counted me, uh, first of all, with his ability. Notice it, our Lord who has what? Enabled me. You're going to the mission field because God has enabled you to go. You've got training. You're a sharp girl. You know a lot. I thank the Lord for that. But I know this too. 
God enabled you or you wouldn't be gone. And we need to remember, I was thinking over there, I'll go back to that text in a minute, but the book of Jeremiah, when, the, when Jeremiah chapter 1 was uh, called to be a prophet. Now today, we're, the church is a non-profit organization. We don't have prophets today. But back in those days, they did. He said in verse uh, 5, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee, and I adorn thee as a prophet of the nations. Before you were born, God had already ordained that you would be a missionary. And so, but he also gives you the ability. And there'll be times when you're on the field, you'll feel like a failure. I think that's good for everyone called in the ministry at some points to feel like they're a failure so they realize it's God and not yourself. I can remember when I preached my first message. I only bring it up because it was one of the worst messages I ever preached in my life. And uh, I'll never forget it. It, it, I think the flag of heaven was, was lowered at half mast, and the angels wept. And when I got down from the pulpit, I said to my wife, honey, it's obviously God has not called me to preach. I was still in college training for the ministry and was ready to resign because I didn't think God was with me. There will be times when you're going to have some failures. Failures are good for you to show that he enabled you and that you didn't do it yourself. You're gifted with his ability. <coughs> thank the Lord for that. Look there in verse 12 again. I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me. He did it all. It's all about him. But he not only gifted you with his ability, he graced you with his approval. He graced you with his approval. For that he counted me faithful. I, I think about that fact that you've been faithful. This is why, this is why we're here tonight. Uh, because you were faithful in your commitment. You, I guess, went to some 60 different churches, you told me. That's a lot of churches. And the time she's been on the, ready to go, on the 60 different churches, you were committed to do what God wanted you to do. You wouldn't, listen, there are missionaries out there still trying to get their support You've done, a, what, 11 months. You have, what, 5% to go. Whatever you do, don't pat yourself on the back. I'd pat you on the back, but that'd be the case. Your hand, but your hand would be in the way, and that's not good. <laughs> you give him the glory. Faithful in your commitment and faithful in your choices. You, were, got, you got out on the road and went to different churches. I, I would communicate with you. When I'm thinking she ought to be home in bed, she doesn't feel well, she's sick. But you made the right choices. And so we realize here, you were faithful in your commitment. I'm going to go. You were faithful in your choices. Even when I don't feel good. Well, you know, we all ought to assist. Listen, if we go on feelings, we're never going to get anything done for the Lord. If she relied on feelings, she would not be where she is at 95%. Hallelujah. Would you say amen to that? Amen. You believe it? Raise your hand and shave them a little bit. I'm for all that. You were faithful in your commitment. You were faithful in your choices. And you were faithful in your convictions. I was thinking over there in Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 8. I said, uh, the, the, the Lord said, who, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And Isaiah said, said I I'm here. I'll, I'll go. Send me, Lord. Thank God that you were willing. You've made some choices. And you had some convictions. You believe, and, and there are times when, I'll be honest with you, honey, with your health situation, I said, ooh, no, you know, but you know, it's going to improve. It's going to keep improving. Now, I want to say this on the side. I'm praying God will put some weight on that body. <laughs> Amen? I think, I don't know how many pounds, but uh, don't gain as much as your dad did, but, uh, you know, <laughs> put some weight on that body would be a good thing. Amen? <laughs> she hasn't been well. We want you well. And I thank God for you. And because of your commitment, because of your choices, and certainly because of your convictions, you were gifted with his ability. Not your ability. He enabled you. You were graced with his approval. God counted you faithful. But thirdly, 
You, he guided you by his providence. I'm here tonight because in God's providence, five years ago, in coming July, I came to be the interim pastor of this church, and I got to know that girl. She picked on me. Don't believe me, ask her grandfather, right? Right, yeah. And, uh, but she picked on me, and guess what? I picked back. But we became close and fellowship and love the Lord. Notice he says, notice here, putting me in the ministry. Now, I want me to tell you something. It's great to be in the ministry. And God is now putting you in the ministry. And we need to all remember what she's been going, what, she, what she's been called to do, be minister for the Lord, a servant of the Lord. That's a great calling. I remember when God called me some nearly 60, 60, 61 years ago. I know I don't look that old, but he did. I do look that old? Okay. All right. And he called me into the ministry uh, some 61 years ago, and uh, I didn't have many people believe that I could make it. And there are probably some who question with your health situation whether you're going to make it or not, but you're going to make it, honey. You're going to do it. I can call her, honey, she's like my adopted granddaughter. Because God is in this. And God is in your life. And God wants you to go to the mission field, and he's going to send you there. I want those 20, 30 pounds added on, though, okay? For the glory of God. Putting me into the ministry. It's great to be in the ministry, and God is going to use you. I thought of three statements the Apostle Paul made concerning the fact that, why, that how God kept him into the ministry. I want you to notice three things. I'm just going to give the verses. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 10. Paul said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. That was the heart of Paul. That's your heart tonight. By the grace of God... I am what I am. And you'll stay in the ministry. There are people today who were in the ministry who are not in the ministry now. And why? Because their heart was not in it. Not, it. was not in it. Their heart was not right with the Lord. He said, count, he said, counted by the grace of God, I am what I am. And he said, over there in Ephesians 3, the second time, verse 8, and to me who am less than the least of the, of, of the, uh, of the, of the sinners. Less than the least. You get to the le less, least of sinners that I'm less than those. Think with me tonight. Be careful. I have found people who have not stayed in the ministry because they didn't stay humble. That spoke of Paul's humility. His humility. Stay humble. Be careful with success. reason why God had used that man sitting right there is because he stayed humble. And I watched missionaries come home from the field because they lost their humility. So you need, you need the heart and you need the humility and holiness because in 1 Timothy 1, verse 15, we're in that chapter. Look there, verse 15. There's a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came to the world to save sinners. What? Of whom I'm what? Never forget some of the pit from which you've been saved. You've been raised in a good family. Good mom, good dad, good grandparents. Hallelujah for that. But keep in mind, you're still the chief of sinners. I'm a chief of sinners. Pastor here is chief of sinners. He is worse than the chief of sinners right here. <laughs> but thank the Lord. So I say to you tonight, gifted with his ability, it's all God's ability, graced with his approval, counted him faithful. He saw you were faithful. Faithful in your commitment, in your choices, and in your convictions, guided by his providence, the providence of God. If you want to stay in the ministry, three things as I close. Stay close to the Lord. 
Stay close to the board, Lord. John 13, verse 21, when Jesus said to the disciples, one of you is going to betray me. John was, was leaning, on his, leaning on his breast, and all of a sudden you find he was no longer leaning. He was lying on his breast. He got as close to the Lord as he can. I tell you today, we all need to get as close to the Lord as we can tonight. Get as close as we can. We never can get too close to the Lord. Stay close to the Lord. Stay in the book. This is the book I'm talking about. I know there are people who say it's a, it's a myth. Well, they're mistaken. It's the eternal word of God. And you, when you go over there, all that you're going to do is going to be centered around this book. Amen. Keep that in mind. And then keep in mind, stay firm in your convictions. Don't change your convictions. Don't lose your convictions and God will greatly lose you and all God's people said amen, amen. thank you man thank you brother Stevens we appreciate that but appreciate him and he's a wonderful wonderful blessing to our church and to me in just a moment I'm going to have Miss Summer come up she's going to say a word to the church but before that Miss Becca Wakefield is going to come and share a song and I know it'll be a great blessing to you so she comes listen to this song and then we'll invite Miss Summer up Morning by morning, I wake up to find the power and comfort of God's hand in mine. Season by season, I watch Him amazed in awe. hand will provide he's always been faithful to me I can't remember a trial or pain he did not recycle to bring One single regret of serving God only and trusting His hand. All I have need of, His hand will provide. He's always been faithful to me.
God has been faithful. He will be again. His loving compassion, it knows no end. All I have need of, His hand will provide. He's always always been faithful. He's always been faithful to Thank you, Becca. He has been faithful, and he's been faithful to Summer as she has traveled and presented and uh, raised support, and he has been so, so good to her. I just wanted her to come up, if you don't mind, Miss Summer, and just share a word to the church, because I want you to remember well the need, as Brother Bowman talked about, to be praying and supporting her and standing behind her, because we are sending her out as a church, commissioning her into this ministry that she's going to go over and be actively involved in uh, seeing people saved and blessed and helped and uh, so thankful for that. Summer, why don't you come, please? Well, thank you, Pastor, uh, for the opportunity and for this commissioning service. Um, truly, the Lord has been faithful, and I've seen that time and time again on deputation. And uh, tonight's not about summer scrubs. It's about what the Lord has done. And uh, praise Him for His goodness. Uh, the Lord was good when I guess I started presenting like Pastor Stephen started preaching. I, I did such a horrible job that made me come up and do it a second time the same night. And, uh, but the Lord was faithful and brought me through that. And then uh, it's been mentioned my health and such, but God has been so good every step of the way. And uh, praise Him for that. Thank you all. I want to thank my family for their support, their prayers, um, their help, and uh, raising me and having me in church. Uh, for Pastor, Preacher Lasley, Dr. Stevens, even though he wants me to gain 25, 30 pounds. <laughs> Still very thankful for their influence in my life. And for you all as a church family and those who don't normally come here regularly but are here visiting for the service, thank you so much for your impact, your influence in my life. Um, some of you all knew me as a baby and gave me a bottle. Uh, but many of you all fed me the Bible throughout classes and mission trips, youth group. And uh, I'm so thankful for your influence and your impact on my life. And uh, just um, ask that you would continue to pray for me. Um, the, the beginning is, you know, it's just beginning really. Um, I have two more weeks on deputation, four more meetings, so praise the Lord. Uh, my term of vegetable eating is almost over. <laughs> Uh, but again, so thankful. Thank you, Brother and Mrs. Bowman, for being here and for your um, guidance and your impact, again, helping me to get this far and to get on deputation and to, can you, to continue on and get ready for Botswana. And uh, just thank you again for your prayers. Many of you all have said that you pray for me daily, and I, I don't take that for granted. Um, I know without the prayers, I wouldn't be here today. So thank you so much, and uh, just praise the Lord for what He's done. Amen. And thank you so much, Summer. And I wanted you to understand how, how much of a blessing what is going on tonight is because there are many pastor friends of mine that um, their church has never done this. Not because they wouldn't want to, just because nobody's ever come up and surrendered to the mission field and churches have been in existence for a long time and they've never had someone called out of their midst to go to a foreign field and take the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I say that not to brag because it's not anything that's been done here, uh, but it's just a wonderful blessing of the Lord. I thank God for what the Lord led Preacher Lassie so many years ago to do to bring missions to the forefront of this great church and put it on the front burner, as it were, to say, this is what's important. And to put it bluntly, he put the gospel right in the face of everybody, and everyone didn't enjoy it, I'm sure. Um, but he put the gospel right in front of everybody to be locally spread through the bus ministry and through door-to-door -door and through neighborhoods and through all of these 
avenues that we have as a church to do it right here, but then he also put it on the front burner to get our church to be a mission-minded church. And I couldn't be more thankful for what the Lord led him to do in that path that he paved so long ago. But I wanted to share with you before we leave, we'll dismiss here in just a few moments and head over to the Family Life Center. If you're able to stay, we'll have some good fellowship. But I wanted to say, why on earth would we have a fine, young Christian lady leave here and go to Botswana when there's nothing there that she needs that couldn't be gotten here? Why would you leave the comfort of home? Why would you leave the love of family? Why would you leave all of the advances that we have in this wonderful nation and not to mention this is home? We live in such a wonderful spot. Why would you leave? Well, the reason is found in the great commission that God gave in Matthew 28. Jesus, as He was speaking to the disciples, and he said unto them in verse number 18, all power is given to me in heaven and in earth. And then because of that, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So why would we take the brightest and why would we take the best? And send them to somewhere that none of us know anybody that lives there. They don't live like we do. They don't enjoy the same things we do. They don't know any of your kinfolk. And yet we're sending somebody that we love dearly over there. Why would you do that? In the world's eyes and in many Christians' eyes, unfortunately, it just doesn't make any sense. We've lived our lives trying to raise everybody up so they can come right back and live close to us. You'll see sometimes family farms, and those family farms will have the one old house that mom and dad lived in and raised their children in. And then just a little bit down there, they separated part of the farm up, and then somebody else built a, fa- built a house there. And then on down, somebody else in their family built a house there. And they all get to have the dream that my kin- or kids are down there, and we all get to come and have Sunday dinner after church every Sunday together. And it's a wonderful time. Well, why would somebody that has all that they want, they live around grandparents, they live around parents or they live in a home that they're familiar with, why would they say, I'm going to leave it all and go to Botswana? Well, there's a reason, and that reason is because Jesus said so. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And she won't get all the way around the world, but there's this part of the section of the world that God has designated for her to go to and through medical missions and through clinics and through all the things that who knows what the Lord is going to open up that she's going to be able to infiltrate the area with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We go because Jesus said to. We go not only that because in verse number 19 it says, and teach all nations. Teach them what when you get there? They don't need to know how to clean up wounds. They don't need to know how to get cleaner water. They don't need to know, as Brother Bowman already mentioned, they don't need all that. Well, they do need all that, and they need a whole lot more than they've got. But what they really need is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because, you see, we could send humanitarian aid over there until all our resources were depleted, and we could make them better off than we are. But if we didn't tell them about the gospel of Jesus Christ, then all we did was made them cleaner, nicer, and more pleasant people that go to hell. And so the reason she needs to go is because the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that gospel is the same message that you need tonight, that got me so many years ago. You see, everybody in Botswana needs to know that they're not good enough on their own to go to heaven. The Lord Jesus Christ says that He came to seek and to save that which was lost. He came to save sinners. And he re- we realize that the people that Jesus came for were you and me and the people who live down my street and your street. But it's broader than that. They live all around this nation, but it's broader than that. They live over in Botswana. And so the reason that she needs to go is the same reason these yellow buses need to go out next week. And the same reason these gospel tracts need to get passed out. It's because the same reason that everybody in this room has an eternal soul. See, this whole world is full of humans and all of us have a problem, the Bible says. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's not an American thing. That's not a Botswana thing. That's a universal human thing that all of us have sinned. And because of that, all of us have a payment that we owe for those sins. 
The same true in there as it is here, that each one of us are responsible for our sins. We're responsible for our lying, our cheating, our disobedience, all those things. And the Bible says, if I got what I deserved, I'd spend an eternity in a wicked place called hell. There has to be something more than just a love for the people of Botswana. There has to be something more than just a love for the people of Gray, Tennessee. There has to be more than just a love for the people as Brother Eric oversees the, uh, the Africa. There has to be more than a, just a love for the people there in their own selves. There has to be a love for Jesus Christ. And that love for Jesus Christ then makes us turn around and love the people He loves and show them the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so everybody in this room is under the same problem that the people in Botswana is, are, and that is that we all have a sin problem, and because of that, each one of us need to know the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that gospel of Jesus Christ explains to each of us that He died on that cross, and He rose again after He was buried for three days in victory over your sin and my sin, so that now every person in Botswana that understands their condition but looks to a Savior and calls upon His name, can go spend an eternity in heaven with Jesus Christ. But my friend, it's not just Botswana people. You tonight. Maybe you're here to honor Summer, and thank you for doing that. But as our pastor, can I tell you that what would honor her more than anything else is if you would understand the gospel message, the one that she's leaving off for and going to Botswana to labor for one message, and that's the gospel of Christ. And that gospel of Christ is that Jesus loves you, died for your sins so that you could receive Him, forgiveness of, his, of your sins, and you could go to heaven. So why would we go? Because Jesus said to. And because everyone has a need for the gospel. Now, if we're not going to go there, then we need to spread the gospel here. It's not fair for us to send her and then us not do it here. Amen. How hypocritical would that be? Just like it wouldn't be fair for us to send her over there and say, I got so busy doing all these other things, I didn't spread the gospel. We'd say, Summer, that's not right. Also, it wouldn't be right if she looks back and says, I'm spreading the gospel in Botswana. And we'd say, Summer, we quit doing that over here. She would have equal reason to be upset with us. We spread it because they need the gospel. And we spread it because she, and we're sending her because Jesus is with her Be. He says, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Her mom can't go. Oh, I'm sure they'll visit sometime. I hope they do. Her dad can't go. Her grandparents, her pastor can't go. But better than all of those, Jesus said he would be with her. Amen. And lo, I am with you always even under the end of the world. My friend, the reason that somebody would leave all they have and go over there is because Christ told us to, because they have a need for the gospel. Oh, my goodness. They have a need for the gospel and because Jesus accompanies her as she goes. Father, I pray that you would bless us tonight. I pray for every soul that's here this evening that they would have seen past just the presentations and the statements that were made about Summer and about her life and about what she's going to do. I pray that, dear Lord, you would bring it in, focus clear on them tonight, that if they've never received Christ as their personal Savior, then they need to do that this evening. Summer's going to go over to Botswana and tell folks about Christ. But, Lord, there could be somebody here right now tonight that needs to know Jesus as their Savior. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. If you're here tonight and you're not sure that you're saved... My friend, the reason that you're here is to honor her, and the reason she's going to not be here and go over there is to tell them about Christ. But are you tonight realizing in your heart of hearts that you need to receive Christ for the forgiveness of your sins? I challenge you right there where you are, that you would reach out to Christ in faith. The Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Is that you tonight? And that's ringing clear into your heart. I need to call upon the Lord. I realized as a young person that I was on my way to hell and there was nothing that I could do to change my trajectory. There was nothing I could do to change my destination. But instead of going to that place I deserved, I reached out to Christ in faith and I asked Him to save me and take me to heaven. My friend, do you need to do that tonight? Years ago, I prayed to ask Christ to 
save me, forgive me of my sins. If that's you this evening, I challenge you to do it right there where you sit. Lord Jesus, this is what I prayed, something like this. I know I'm a sinner. I'm not good enough to go to heaven. Lord, the people in Botswana need the same thing I need. I need Jesus. And Jesus, I ask you to be my Savior. I prayed something like this. Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. Take me to heaven when I die. And my friend, I challenge you, if you're not saved, that you would reach out in faith to him tonight. Ask him to save you. I'm going to ask our piano player and organist to come. And as they make their way to the front, if they begin to play, and if you're able to, would you stand together? It might make it easier on somebody else to get out. Perhaps you're here tonight. You're not sure that you're saved. Would you step out and come and let me or someone show you from the Bible how you can be certain of that? they continue to play. If God's moving upon your heart, I invite you to come. As they play this verse, I'm going to ask some of the deacons of the church to slip down to the front. You want to bring your wives. It's wonderful. Bring them as well. Some other folks, if you want to come and join us, then please do so. We're going to have a prayer dedication over Summer Scroggs. I'll ask our staff here, they'll be here, you and your wives, and maybe some Sunday school teachers you've helped summer, you've just encouraged her. You're all, all welcome. We'll just get around here. You come on down. We won't, uh, say, I don't know that I ever taught her what we prayed for, haven't we? Why not you all come on down? Get down as far as you can. You can come up here by some of these steps and different things. We'll dismiss in just a little bit, but before we do, I want our church to send off a servant of God. If somebody were taking a post at a military s spot, we would say, we're going to pray for you. Well, we're taking more, than, more important than our military, more important than the message, I should say, and that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. I got number one. We've got a, uh, a Bible. It's in Setswana language, and it's the language of the area that summer will be at. And I've had our deacon sign the front, and preacher Lastly, and brother Stevens, and brother Bowman, and Amy, and I. But um, it's a it's a wonderful joy for our, the, the, the the for our church to get to send somebody, commission them, and. Um, there's nobody in this room that knows Africa more than Brother Bowman. Brother Bowman, I'm going to ask you to slip up this way and take our microphone and pray for us. And then when he, gets, when he concludes praying, we, I want to have Brother Stevens, if you don't mind, uh, just close us in prayer. I've been a close personal friend of the family and is going to continue to pray. And, um, and then we'll do one other thing after that. I'd like for Marty just to say a word as well. But this is a special time for our church. If you're up here, you need to sit down. That's fine. But if we just stay and as they pray, I want you to pray that the Lord put his richest blessings upon Summer and uh, just guide her with her, his grace, strengthen him, strengthen her with his power and be especially close to him or her with his presence. And um, we could all have part of that. Brother Bone, would you pray for us? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we bow before you, thanking you for our salvation.
and help to keep us in focus and in line. We thank you, Father, for the challenge tonight of you counted some earth faithful. You put her into this wonderful ministry, Father. Father, I rejoice, as with every missionary that goes to the African continent. You know the great need all around the continent, Father. There's so, so many open doors and there's so many places that desperately need the gospel. And there's just nobody there. Nearly a thousand unreached people groups, Father. You love them. You died for them. And we thank you, Father, that one now from this great church is going to be sent out. And I pray that you would put your hedge of protection around her, that you would bless her, give her everything that is a physical and spiritual need that you would provide. Father, we delight in serving you, and we thank you for the privilege of doing so. Now, Father, I do pray that you would give your special unction to our dear sister, that you would bless her and speed her on her way, and that you would be so honored and glorified by the life that she will give to you. In Jesus' name. Closing on me, Clunker. Father, it's been a great night. I wonder how many other young people, older people, will be touched tonight because of, of Summer and her call and her commitment and her convictions. Lord, I don't know of many missionaries who go into the field, be able to go to the field, raise the support in a year, but she's, God has done that. Thank you for, we pray your blessings tonight upon her, upon the family tonight. Thank you for what, uh, what this whole message, this whole meeting tonight has meant to me personally, as well as to this church. Lord, may many more be called because of what took place tonight in Christ's name, amen. Amen. I wanted to just give you maybe a seat or you can slip back to your seat if you want. I just wanted to give Marty and Tracy if she wants, but Marty, a word, time to just say a, a word. And uh, Marty and I have served together for all this time we've been here. And I'm so thankful for him. And maybe he doesn't want to say anything, but I'm, I just wanted to give him this opportunity in summer as we get that. This Bible we signed by the deacons, by me, Amy, and uh, Preacher, uh, Preacher Lastly, and Brother Stevens, and Brother Bowman, and just a gift from us, okay? God bless you. <laughs> Y'all just wait up there. We're going to take a picture here. The beauty and the beast, huh? Don't, don't call some of that. <laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> well... As some of y'all know, I'm not, I really don't like getting up and speaking, um, but this is one of the most proudest days of my life. I'm very proud of both of my children. The Lord's been very good to me. So much better than me than I deserve. We prayed for her was just a baby. That the Lord would call her and use her. It was easy then. It's easy now. The Lord has given us such grace. And it's such an honor to think, who am I that the Lord would call my child? Scott, you know. Steve, you know. Bobby, you know, what, what an honor that the Lord would see fit to call my child. The Lord is so good. We have so much to thank him for. Church family, you've been so much better to us than we deserve. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you for everyone that's been here. This church is such a blessing. It's like a giant family to us. You've been so very good to us. But the Lord has been so much better. I just want to praise him and thank him for all that he's done. Well, it's been a blessing. And um, I wanted to do one other thing, Brother Danny. Would you mind coming? We'll put him on one again. And I just wanted to 
send off the mess or the meeting by uh, just something we talked with over in the deacons. You know Marty's a deacon, so we dismiss Marty. And what we're about to present to you is without Marty's help because I wanted the deacons and I just to get together and to make this recommendation to the church. The pastor and the deacons recommend that we give Summer Scroggs, missionary to Africa, $12,000 toward her transport, housing, car, and etc. This will come from the mission fund. And I make this motion. Amen. Amen. We want them to know we don't just want to pray for you. We're going to try our best to get the funds that they need as well. And so we're grateful to get to support her monthly, but we also want to come behind and uh, help with this transport cost and uh, uh, all that she needs to get set up over there. So we'd make that motion. Uh, and uh, Brother Stephen Gallion seconds the motion back there in the back. All in favor, would you say aye? Aye. Opposed, same sign. Amen. Well, it's been a wonderful place to be tonight. And I told you it'd be a little longer than normal. I tell you, you get this many preachers together. And I, I told Brother Stevens to keep it short, and um, he didn't. <laughs> no, he did. And, and everything but Brother, uh, Brother Bowman was such a, a blessing, and Brother Stevens. Uh, the only reason I pick on him is just because he picks on me so much. So I just, I'm just protecting myself. I'm just... Uh, but uh, we thank God. Uh, these, the, the, these, um, these men are so blessed, such a blessing to come to us. And then pastor, our, our pastor emeritus preacher, lastly, has done so much for this family. And I'm just so thankful for um, the way that he's paved to let this family be where they are tonight. Um, and so many decisions made back years ago that uh, have gotten us to this night. And I'm just so grateful. We are really standing on the backs of the, or the, on the shoulders of people who have gone on before us. And so it's a blessing. Brother Marty, anybody in your family else want to say anything? Brent? Good? Well, it's been a, a joy to be here. We do invite you over to the Family Life Center. We've got some, uh, some cake and we've got some wonderful time. I'm going to dismiss the Scroggs family, if you don't mind, to slip on over that way. You can get, get there ahead of us. And um, they, they will be over there and we'll fellowship with them together. You can just go either down the hall or across the parking lot and we'll slip into the Family Life Center, have a one. If you can just come over a few moments, that's fine. If you can stay for the whole time, that's good as well. No agenda, just over there to fellowship and tell Summer that you'll be praying for her. And uh, we're certainly thankful. So to our church family, I say thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting missionaries. But more than that, thank you for supporting our missionary, Danny. Thank you, Marty. Thank you. Oh, there's got to be one in every crowd. Get out of here. So, we'd make a motion that uh, we'd, we'd uh, close the business meeting. All in favor, stand together. And all opposed, sit back down, I guess. But, uh, and uh, we are dismissed the meeting. Thank you. Thank you for your extra time tonight. And uh, what a joy. I really do mean this. This is a joy for our church to get to do this. Goodness gracious. Thank the Lord for what he's done. Miss Charlotte Bryant, uh, this is, uh, she's here tonight again with us and moving up north away from us. But uh, we're so thankful for uh, her. I want you to be praying as the Lord is moving her up with Brother Greg and Miss Ferris. And uh, we'll be there with family. And so you get by and see her as well. Thank you for being in church tonight and for all the festivities. God bless you. You're dismissed. Amen. Thank you, Brother Danny. Appreciate it.